you hang a painting by Philip Sutton on your wall, you bring light and colour into your home. Philip Sutton was born in Poole in 1928. He rose to fame in the 1950s with paintings that were bright and happy. His paintings have been collected by, amongst others, Princess Margaret, Albert Finney, Benjamin Britten and Tony Blair. Today, I'm joined by two panellists for a talk about Philip Sutton. Simon Tate is a former arts correspondent at the Times and he's also written a book about Philip Sutton. Dr Tim Hochstrasser is an Associate Professor in the Department of International History at the London School of Economics. Thanks for joining us today, Tim and Simon. Thank you very much. Just to be here. Philip Sutton is 92 um, and he continues to paint. Um, Tim, if you don't mind, can I ask you a question? Um, sure. Are there, any, are there many examples in art history of artists continuing to paint in their 90s? Well, not many, but two that immediately would come to mind, I think, would be Picasso, who made it to 91, and also to Titian, although we don't know precisely when Titian, uh, uh, whether Titian got to 90, but he was certainly very old uh, by the time he was doing his final works. Now, I think if you ask, well, what do those two artists have in common in their 90s? It is a determination not to withdraw into conservative repetition, to continue to experiment, to continue to be radical where possible, to experiment with new media in the case of Picasso, and in Titian's case, to vary his uh, painterly technique in all sorts of experimental ways. In fact, I was reminded of Philip's work when I went recently to the Titian exhibition of the National Gallery, which includes one of his very last paintings, which in fact never left his studio, The Death of Actium. It's a painting that has many different levels of finish to it, some very fine, delicate brushwork and some almost expressionistic abstract patches of colour. In particular, there's a yellow painted bush in the foreground that could have been painted by Philip Sutton, Sutton in its uh, uh, extravagant dabs of yellow paint, just experimenting with the juxtaposition of the yellow, with the surrounding colours and with the brushwork. So in that sense, I think being in your 90s is in no sense um, an invitation to conservatism or withdrawal. It's an opportunity free from expectations, free from conventional assumptions to go forward and explore new territory uh, in a, a very uh, light and delicate way. Well, that's funny you mentioned Titian because we used to have postcards of Titian on his studio wall. Uh, sorry, Simon, did you want to mention something there? I was, no, I was only going to say that that, that that is Phil's story as well in that he's always been experimenting, he's always been trying been trying things out he never when he he's on a canvas and he has a change of idea it doesn't change the canvas he starts again on a brand new canvas i mean he's he's uh, and he doesn't blink at that uh so that experimental that search for something new all the time uh is what uh, is what keeps them painting and uh um uh monet was the same and she and uh matisse was the same uh uh, and I think um, he was saying that he's he's kind of he, he had been locked down for uh, eight months or more uh, in where he where in his place in um, West Bay, where he couldn't see the normal things he would paint. He couldn't go to the beach and paint there, but there were a lot of birds in the garden. So he's been painting birds. He's discovered all kinds of new things. Uh, in in the painting of birds, and so he's still inventing and still being creative in that way. Oh, isn't that wonderful, um, Simon? Another question for you: um, What influences do you see in Phil's work? What influences from outside? Absolutely, yeah. Other other artists, perhaps, or I don't know. You can take the question. I think that um, Tim will can probably better answer this. Because he's uh, because I'm not I'm not academic um, uh, and I, I I don't see any influence 
um, from outside. I know he, uh, he, he, he tried to come to terms with uh, abstractism, couldn't see it at all. He tried um, uh, to uh, uh, abstract expressionism. He, he, he liked the look of the colours in that, but that didn't quite work for him either. Um, he he had to find his own way, and uh, and I think um, there are, uh, uh, as Tim says, there are painters that he admired and admires now, but not that he would copy. Uh, he 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 would admire their technique, um, and he, he, he had a um, the the biggest change in his painting life was when he was in uh, uh, in Suffolk when. He, his whole kind of style changed, his whole life changed while he was in the three years he was there. And that was just the influence of where he was. It was nothing to do with any, any, any anybody else. And the teachers um, at the Slade uh, despaired a bit of trying to get him to do the things that they thought he should be doing. Uh, they did get him to do printmaking, which um, which was something he, he never thought he was any good at, but actually he excelled at. Um, but otherwise, you know, I mean, he he, he would uh, sit in a still life class or in a life drawing class and he'd be painting the bus queue outside the window because it was much more interesting than the naked person in front of him. Uh, Tim, do you think it's possible to, to be original? I, I, I think it is, but originality comes in so many different um, uh Types. I mean, it can be stylistic originality, it can be originality in juxtaposition of colour, it can be um, the vantage point that you take uh, on the subject. Uh, I mean, I'm always you know, re repeating the saying of the composer Arnold Schoenberg, who's, who pioneered a new serial type of composition. He always said there's a hell of a lot of great music still to be written in C major. You know, that there are so many different ways of approaching a subject as long as the artist has a consistent experimental and searching perspective, as Philip has shown throughout his career, I think. Um, Simon, do you think that Phil's paintings have changed during his career? Well, that's a huge question. Has it, have his paintings changed? Um, the subject matter... Um, yeah, it changes. I mean, I, I, I remember one winter when he was in, he, he and Heather were still in Manabir. I rang up, it was, a, it was a very cold January, and I rang up to see if they were okay, because you know where they were was a particularly bleak, could be a very bleak place. And he said, I'm fine, I'm fine. He said, do you know one thing I've never been able to do is paint snow, and I can now. <laughs> he found, by watching it, he could paint snow. So he was learning all the time. So uh, his painting, does his, do his painting, Jay, his, his, his understanding of colour, his complete confidence uh, with colour, uh, has never changed. And the subject matter uh, depends on what's around him. Uh, often it has been his family, which is the most important thing to him of all, and it, often it's nature. Uh, I think some of the most stunning um, canvases are were at Man of Beer, were those uh, outside in that strange meadow in front of the cottages there, um, a very beautiful place. Um, but uh, the the the, uh, the discipline that he brought to to to, to making those paintings is um, is uh, uh, exemplary. And, uh, and I think that that um, is something that people will see and take away. But I think um, the painting itself, uh, it, it, it hasn't really changed. I mean, the, he, he came back from Suffolk with a new kind of um, bravura in his stroke work, um, which he hadn't had before, a new confidence in, in what he was doing. Actually, are you and, talking about 1950s, mid-50s or...? The 50s, 60s. I think yes. Uh, so when um, before your well, well before Becky was born, uh, when they, she was born in Battersea, they came back from from there to to, to Battersea, which is when he became um, famous, and uh, during those years in Battersea, and uh, was you know extremely popular. Um, and his 
his style had already got to where it was at that time. It didn't change while he was, but success didn't change while he was painting. Uh, in, in the least. In fact, success has never bothered him in the least, I don't think. He he left Battersea quite happily to go to uh, the furthest away from Battersea that he could still get and still be in the British Isles, I think. Um, and uh, that was fine by him. Um, fame and, and artists. Um, do artists need to become famous to survive? Well, to survive, uh, probably, uh, yes. To flourish, I'm not sure. You know, the artist's journey is, uh, is one that has an integrity uh, within itself and shouldn't be dependent on um, uh, sources of funding and support. But the artist still has to put the meal on the table and the wood uh, on the fire. And so there is, you know, inevitably uh, a push-me-pull-you relationship between sponsorship and funding uh, and um, what the artist produces. That has been uh, part of the story of art. The story of patronage is part of the story uh, of art. But, you know, I think fundamentally uh, the artist's uh, career uh, has to be seen uh, as um, a set of steps taken by the artist for artistic uh, reasons rather than for uh, external reasons. And most of the great artists after uh, uh, their time, you can see that pathway through their work as much as through their professional uh, or patronage relationships. When, um, when Heather and Phil were in the south of France, when they just, he just left the Slade, uh, they were living on nothing at all. You and Uglo, his, his fellow student, um, who was very successful early on, was on his way back from, um, uh, from Rome and called in and found that they were living entirely on a diet of potatoes, nothing else. So he went out and bought them a big bag of groceries to, to keep them going. But I mean, he, he, uh, so he would do that. that. Just to jump in on that, we've had like inquiries from people. Who I've so, uh, to uh, absolutely. I mean, so they, 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 the, 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 um, the starving artist, uh, is, um, is a very real, um, phenomenon and, um, whether fame takes them out of it, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think the the importance is that they get through that with their integrity intact. It's so easy not to I'm do so. And um, I think great painters like Philip uh, inevitably do. Um, do you think the world is harder for artists now than in the past? I think there have been different challenges in different uh, uh, eras. Um, uh, and uh, I think in, in certainly in the present circumstances and in the pandemic circumstances, uh, I can see that uh, the uh, artist has both uh, challenges and opportunities to face. Uh, isolation uh, can be a bonus for an artist, of course, because uh, it forces himself or herself back on their own resources uh, and into the core of their creativity but also it cuts them off from the source of their creativity, the stimulus of the outside world and the ability to actually analyse it, experience it uh, and view it uh, with uh, full uh, discretion. So, I mean, it cuts both ways, I think. Well, that's interesting. You mentioned the pandemic. Um, Simon, um, Phil's getting quite a big following um, on Facebook and it's increased, I think, during the... Um, pandemic. Um, why do you think his paintings are so popular right now? That's a very good question. Um, I think, um, I, don't, I don't really know why. I mean, it's interesting that uh, he put, I think he put five paintings into the summer exhibition and sold four of them in the first two days this time, which is never, well, he, I think he may have done it earlier on, but not for a very long time. Um, there's a there, there's an exuberance, a, a, a life to his painting um, that lifts the mood. Inevitably, you can't help it, and I think everybody needs their moods lifted, or hasn't been needed their moods lifted in this last few months. And I think that's why it's it's they're happy paintings, and um, uh, uh, people want to have a notion of happiness. 
I think in a very real way, they give um, us a window on the world we have temporarily lost, you know, not just because there may be a window in the picture, but because they bring back uh, the subject matter uh, of the outside world in all of the seasons uh, and in all of its moods in ways that we can encounter it while we are stuck indoors. I mean, I have a reproduction of one of Philip's paintings over my desk, and it has given me Im immense support uh, and stimulus over the past uh, few months. It's a painting of the artist's working room. It's a high ceilinged room with uh, a big bay window, all of the apparatus of the artist in the foreground, but a wonderful flood of different colours coming in through the window. And when I get stuck in my writing work, I often look up at that particular poster and look at a patch of the painting, look at the juxtaposition of certain colours and wonder why Philip did that particular chair in that particular combination of yellow, blue uh, and red. Now, I don't come to any answers on that because I'm not an artist, but it helps me uh, rethink in an unconscious way my own uh, creative blocks uh, and... Um, distracts me in the best way from uh, the problems that I'm facing right in front of me. Looking at the world from an oblique or par perhaps parallel angle, giving inspiration and insight into his creativity, just as I'm trying to get on with my daily work. Well, I think that to be artists generally, uh, I, I, nobody, people have never been as conscious in the last few months, as, as they have been in the last few months, of the importance of artists. I don't mean just painters, but actors, uh, uh, writers, dancers, and so on. Because they uh, do, as you say, Tim, give um, a, a window on the, 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 the more carefree world that we, um, where we feel we belong, and which we hope we will return to. So uh, they've got a, a hugely important role to play now and in the near future. And um, Philip, age 92, is doing his bit in a big way. That's interesting. Um, OK, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, I hope it's not too, um, too scary. Um, maybe, Simon, we could start with you. Um, is Philip Sutton a great painter? Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, because of his originality, he didn't follow any schools. He didn't. He was interested in what was going on and watched it closely, and still does. But he didn't. Uh, he didn't try to copy it in any way. And I think that his his greatness is in in his originality, and in the supreme draftsmanship of what he's able to do. I mean, he. Uh, he despaired at the Slade with all those measuring weights and things that um, you and Uglo and Bill Coldstream used to fill around with because he couldn't see the point. Uh, you didn't need. He, he said, "You don't. You you, you know you don't. You don't need a tape measure to measure a nipple." Uh, I can see what that. I can see what it's like, and that's how it goes. And he knew instinctively how to do it, uh, and. It must have been a must have been to the despair of fellow students and teachers that he could just do that. Well, that is that is it. It 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 may not be quite genius, but it's certainly greatness for me. I would say definitely yes. Um, I would just focus on a slightly different angle. I was very struck with that quotation of Phillips, in which he says that his use of colour is rather like using the instruments of the orchestra. Uh, as if uh, he were a composer um, putting together the orchestration of a piece of music. And he is certainly the master of his orchestra, and he doesn't repeat himself. His use of colour, his juxtaposition of the most surprising colour combinations that l makes you look at the object or the moment from a different angle and in a different way uh, is uh, quite unique. He has to pursue the musical image, a unique voice and a unique sound. Uh, and I think you recognise a Philip Sutton painting, immediately you see one. It couldn't really be uh, by uh, anyone else. And that in itself, I think, uh, is something of a mark uh, of greatness. I think of his work sometimes also when I go to a garden like Great Dixter. You know, there's no 
there's no obvious reason why purple flowers and orange flowers should work well together, but Christopher Lloyd tried it and it worked. And you see exactly the same kind of creative process going on, I think, in Philip's work. You look at a colour combination, you think, oh, that can't be right. And then you look at it from different angles, you think about it, you come back to it, and suddenly it makes you look at that flower, that landscape, that moment glimpse through the window, uh, either on a summer's day uh, or on a crisp winter's morning, and you can see that there's a unique moment of artistic insight involved there. That's how I'd sum it up, I think. Yeah. I can't add to that. I mean, he's absolutely right. <laughs>